Welcome all. I'll take you through our project, development of a software tool for load flow analysis in distributed generation integrated radial distribution system. This is the content of today's presentation. These are the motivations so for doing this project. Most of the existing software are focused on transmission system, load flow analysis, and most of them are commercial software which are expensive. Using the software as a teaching tool in the universities is another motivation. Also, the distribution systems are active in nature due to distributed generation integration, so the software should be capable of handling it. Our objective is to develop a user-friendly software tool which can be used to analyze the load flow in the distributed generation integrated radial distribution system. Software tool is applicable for radial distribution systems within the boundary of outgoing primary substation feeders down to the pole point. The steps we followed to come up with the software tool are conducting a literature survey, select a load flow analysis technique, select mathematical models for distribution system elements, conducting a survey to collect data to build predefined load models for residential loads, model the loads using Python programming language, designing the backward forward algorithm and develop it using Python, then developing the user interface and integrate it with the UI uh, and the Python algorithm. And uh, finally, we tested and validated the algorithm. We use forward backward algorithm for load flow calculation. I'll explain this in detail in the upcoming slides. Before carrying out load flow analysis, the distribution system model components should be modeled mathematically. For distribution lines, we selected approximate load model. It does the calculation using data such as conductor diameter, length, and line spacing, ignoring the shunt admittances. In practical scenarios, most of the time, the data available are positive and zero sequence impedances of the data to calculate them. Considering this and the simplicity to implement in our algorithm, we selected this model. By using an equilateral spacing between phases, approximate impedance matrix can be calculated as shown in the slide. This approximated impedance matrix will be used in the forward sweep to calculate the downstream node voltage with respect to upstream node voltage. For the loads, we used composite load model because an actual distribution system experiences all constant power, constant current, and constant impedance loads at the same time. Load current can be calculated using the equations shown in the slide for the constant power, constant current, and constant impedance respectively. Total current drawn by the load can be calculated by assigning a percentage to each of the above components. For the transformers, we use symmetrical component model. Here, the transformers are modeled using symmetrical components, assuming the power system is sufficiently balanced. But according to the literature, this model can be used for unbalanced scenarios as well. Both grounded Y delta and delta Y transformers are modeled in the algorithm for any phase shift given by the user. For the distributed generators, we used constant power factor model. Usually, constant power factor model is, is used to model controllable DGs such as synchronous generator based DGs and power electronic based DGs. In algorithmic aspect, DG in the constant power factor model is considered as a negative load in the system. For capacitor banks, we use constant susceptance model. Susceptance of the capacitor is calculated and it is then used to calculate the current in backward sweep using the equations shown in the slide. Now let's take a look at the algorithms. This is an overview of the overall algorithm. First, we load the data from the data file, then we calculate the basis for each node. Then we find the first and last node and calculate currents at each node, assuming the voltage is one per unit. Then we perform backward sweep and calculate currents at each branch. Then we perform the forward sweep and get voltages. Finally, we check for the convergence criteria. In the backward sweep, we first get a node and we get upstream and downstream nodes. Then we calculate the total current at the node 
and based on the upstream branch type, we calculate the total current at the upstream branch, upstream nodes. In the forward sweep, we get a node and we get all downstream nodes. Then we get all downstream branch types and calculate the downstream voltage using the respective model for all branches. This is the user interface we developed. This can be used by the users to enter data and view result easily. This is, this is the network data entry window. You can enter distribution system data here. This step can navigate to other sections such as calculation settings and results page. These buttons are used to enter edit data for the network. You can view an automatically generated network view here. This is how the program results are shown. This shows voltage in polar 4 for all three nodes in three phase view. Also, it indicates the nodes which the voltage limits are violated. This is the menu bar. You can access load browser and other options of the software through this. And this presents the program log. I'll take you through the attempts to be made to test and validate our algorithm. A separate testing was done to assess the validity of the transformer model we used. According to the test results, the algorithm converged, reaching a tolerance of 0.0001 in five iterations. The maximum deviation observed with the results in difference paper two is 0.89%. This suggests the performance of the algorithm is not significantly affected by the use of sequence component modeling for transformers. Then the system was tested for IEEE 15 bus system presented in reference paper three, assuming a balanced loading condition. As per the results, solution converged in eight iterations and the results from the proposed algorithm match very well with the results of three other existing load flow methods presented in reference three paper. Next, the testing was done for IEEE 4 bus standard test system for both balanced and unbalanced case. The maximum deviation is 1.19% at node 3 for the balance case and 8.85% at node 4 uh, phase B for unbalanced case. IEEE 13 bus system which, with a certain modifications according to the reference 6 was used to test the overall algorithm. The modified system was implemented using PSSE and the results were used to validate the algorithm. The algorithmic solution converged after 11 iterations with the maximum deviation of 6.95% offering at node 692 in phase C. This is the system we implemented using PSSC. These are the results we obtained for each nodes and phases. This is the graphical representation of the comparison of the three phases respectively. According to the results, it can be seen that the algorithm output matched with the expected results. At some points, there were slight deviations and the possible reasons for deviation are ignorance of shunt admittances of the lines and assumes an equilateral spacing between the phases. Moving on the features to the software, the software has a simple and user-friendly design and it allows the use of customizable models to improve the compatibility of any network type. With this software, it is possible to save data as a project file and open anywhere. Also, this includes detailed documentation for each distribution system component model with explanation of mathematical modeling. As a conclusion, the software tool we developed can solve power flow pro problem of a distributed generation integrated radial distribution system and design an algorithm which consists of five distribution system component model with the user interface for simple and easy use. These are the references we used. Thank you.